Welcome to the Cohasset Historical Society's exhibit, Baby It's Cold Outside, Dressing for Winter in Cohasset. My name is Maria Schlag and I am the textile collection manager here at the Society. I am a retired textile conservator and in my retirement I volunteer here taking care of the collection which numbers about 4,000 pieces. Today, we'll be viewing outerwear fashions beginning in the 1820s and progressing to the 1970s. And we'll see how Cohasset residents kept the winter cold at bay. It was during the period from 1820 to 1900 that the evolution of the coat took place in women's fashions. We have 35 pieces in the exhibit to talk about and we're fortunate enough to have four of those pieces on loan to us from the Hingham Historical Society. The exhibit will follow the development of outerwear from 19th century coats, cloaks, and capes worn not only for warmth, but to accommodate the changing styles in dress silhouettes throughout that time. And we'll proceed to the 20th century and see the influence of cultural events in haute couture on outerwear design, as well as the emergence of modern American designers during the mid 20th century. We'll begin here with this 1855 to 60 brown silk taffeta and velvet cape. It is in a patchwork design with silk chenille and fringe trim at the middle and bottom. It's lined with hand quilted brown silk and embellished with four silk satin and chenille drops. It also has a hidden quilted pocket on the inside flap. Next is this 1885 to 90 cream colored silk brocade cape on loan to us from the Hingham Historical Society. It has wide satin weave ruffled ribbon trim on the edges and collar, and also silk tassel ball and frog closures. It is lined with quilted silk lining and underlined with wool. This object was given to the Hingham Historical Society by the Vincent Sanborn family of Hingham. On this standing form is a 1910 to 1915 brown tunic style crushed silk velvet jacket with deep lapels and five braided soutache closures at the front, on the sleeves, and also on the back. The sleeve is dolman style, and the jacket is asymmetrical in design. It is lined at the top with cream-colored silk satin and brown silk satin at the bottom. This jacket is shown over a 1925 gold silk net sleeveless dress with a dropped waist and gold underslip. has a handkerchief style hem, and it was worn and donated to us by Felice Lowe of Cohasset. The next object is this cream silk satin evening gown with a shirred lame bodice from 1930s to 40s. Worn over it is a black seal skin stole in a chevron design from the 1940s. And the stole is from R.H. White Company in Boston. This coat is known as a pelisse. It is from 1810 to the 1820s. The time period was known as the Empire or Regency period, a continuation of the neoclassical period featuring a vertical silhouette and high waistline. The silk satin 1820s pelisse has a banded collar, a lego mutton or jigo sleeve, a matching belt, and a capelet at the top with elongated edges. It has cartridge pleating at the waist and self cord trim on the edges of the cape, the belt, and the front opening. It is lined with cotton satin lining which is underlined with wool. The police was given to the Hingham Historical Society by Edith Andrews, who lived 1854 to 1922. 
Next to the police, you'll see an example of a 1820s to 30s poke bonnet, also on loan to us from the Hingham Historical Society. The poke bonnet, also refers, referred to as the Neapolitan bonnet, features a small crown, wide brim, and is typically smocked with reeds. The brim extends beyond the face to cover the hair or to accommodate private conversations. You'll see on this table that we have set up a tableau of objects that were typical of the Empire period. We've included a portrait of Josephine Bonaparte as she was the high priestess of style at this time. And we've also included gloves, fans, slippers, lace mitts, and a reticule, which is the small purse that would have been worn by fashionable ladies during the Empire period. The changing shapes and tastes of women's dresses, skirts, and sleeves that kept fashion in flux also dictated the shape of women's outerwear. This was especially true during the period from 1850 to 1900. Fabrics popular during this period were woolens, cashmeres, velvets, silks, satins, brocades, and matelassé fabrics. Elaborate trimmings such as pleating, lace, ruching, beads, fringe, and fur were the embellishments used at this time. During the crinoline period, women relied heavily on cloaks and capes to keep them warm. And during the early to mid-1800s, the luxury cashmere shawl became highly fashionable, and as its popularity waned during the late 19th century, these exquisite textiles were repurposed into wrappers, coats, dresses, mantles, and dolmans. The 1850s shawl on this form has a black wool center and is unique in that it has a matched turnover indicating you can see both right sides when the shawl is folded in half. Ordinarily, you would see one right side and one wrong side. Many of these shawls were later mass produced during the Industrial Re Revolution in order to make them more affordable for the masses. But this cashmere shawl is unique from India and woven with a specific weave. The shawl is being worn over a typical silk dress from 1860s with velvet trim and lace collar. We have chosen to show the dress with a quilted silk petticoat. This is a hand quilted petticoat of silk lined with wool. Depending on the climate, women would use cotton or quilted petticoats at this time, but since we're all about dressing for winter in this exhibit, we've decided to use a warm winter hand quilted silk petticoat under this dress. The technological advances in textile production, which were developed during the late 19th century, resulted in fabrics that were luxurious and less expensive. Power looms replaced hand looms, and sometimes unreliable dye stuffs were replaced with reliable synthetic dyes. The country was united from east to west by railroads moving goods produced in the Industrial Revolution nationwide. Ready-to-wear clothing, corsets, crinolines, bonnets, and cloaks were available in stores established during the 1860s, although many women continued to make their own garments or employed dressmakers to do so. During the 1890s, we see the establishment of mail order catalogs, such as Montgomery Ward and Sears Roebuck and Company. During this period, the variety of garments increased based on the changing silhouettes of the bustle period. Jackets and coats were cut to accommodate the bustle configuration of the particular years during this decade. During the late 1890s, capes, many with high puffs at the shoulder to accommodate the gigo sleeve, were most common outdoor garments. Coats during this period were fitted or full, had large sleeves, and ranged in length from short hip length to three quarters or floor length. This 1890s to 1900 black silk matelassé evening cape with stand-up collar, chiffon edge, yoke, and velvet panels down the front with added marabou trim. The velvet panels also have braid. The back has a 20-inch long slit and the cape is lined with changeable silk lining. There are side slits to accommodate your hands to reach in to your dress pockets and an inside belt to hold the cape above your bustle. 
The next coat is 1900 to 1910. It's a black silk swirl pattern brocade with deep pleating at the front, back, and sleeves. The coat has a cape-like effect at the shoulders and purple velvet inserts at the neckline, along with velvet rosettes and black braid and tassel trim at center front. This coat is lined with purple silk in a textured weave with lace trim. The coat is underlined with wool batting and it was given to us by Louvain Hyde of Cohasset. The next coat is a 1904 to 1907 gold broadcloth wool coat with an exquisite soutache trim on the collar, front, back, cuffs, and inside the front opening. The coat also has a velvet collar and is lined with cream-colored silk lining. By 1850 to 60, sewing machines previously utilized only by clothing manufacturers were now readily accessible for the home sewer. We have an authentic 1895 Quaker cloak to show you. It was manufactured by E.J. Neal Company, which was established by Sister Emma Neal of Mount Lebanon's church family in New York. Wool cloaks made for the sisters became popular among women outside of the community, and the sisters produced them until the 1940s. The establishments of, of this grassroots manufacturing industry helped rescue the community from financial ruin and kept it stable for decades while giving the sisters greater status and leverage as the society grew older and fewer males stayed. This 1895 Shaker cloak is made of slate blue unlined wool melton with self-facing inside center front. A matching shoulder cape is attached. The cloak has two blue silk satin ties and the hood is lined with satin and has radial pleating at the back. The next coat is 1905. It's a gray beige wool flannel coat with braid trim at the neck, center front, around the shoulders, and at the cuff edge. There is also a lace flounce at the cuff. The sleeve is gathered and pieced and ruched, and the coat is lined with cream-colored silk satin lining. This blue 1910 to 15 wool coat it, with attached double cape is gathered in the front and back yoke. Multiple rows of off-white trim edge both the cape and the cuffs. In the cape, the coat is lined with blue satin weave cotton and underlined with wool. Next in the children's section is this 1930s to 40s pink twill weave wool three-piece ensemble consisting of a coat, matching hat, and leggings. But unfortunately the leggings were not in good condition and uh, we could not display them. The coat has an eight inch detachable cape with scalloped edge and brown fur trim, two scalloped edged flat pockets, and it is lined with cream silk and underlined with wool batting. The cream colored wool coat from 1915 to 20 has a dropped waistline and ermine trim at the collar, sleeve edges, and waist. The coat is lined with satin weave silk and underlined with wool. It has five mother of pearl buttons under the hidden placket. This coat was donated by the Baron Bancroft family of Cohasset and worn by Jesse and Jane Bancroft born 1908 to 19, and 1912, respectively. The last coat in the children's section is this 1860 to 70 silk plaid coat. It has cartridge pleating where it is joined at the waistline and an attached cape, a narrow collar, and 12 red crochet covered round buttons with frog-like string closures. The bottom of the coat is lined with quilted silk and underlined with wool. The top of the coat is lined with unquilted silk and wool. When the century turned and progressed into the 20s, sports, outdoor activities, new modes of transportation, the advent of women working outside the home, and the popularity of European designers, such as Paul Poiret, Calosseuse, Frederick Worth, and Mariano Fortuny, resulted in less bulky clothing and a high demand for coats, sometimes mimicking dress designs. The slim down stylings popular at this time allowed for a coat to be worn over them, and the demand for coat production increased rapidly with the birth of coat departments at clothing stores. 
By the 1920s, winter coat silhouettes left the female form and expanded to create a looser fit to go with the shapeless styles of that time. It was during this time we saw a new fiber manufactured from cellulose, known as artificial silk. Later in the 50s, we know this as acetate. Fur collars and cuffs were popular to denote glamour and decadence prior to the stock market crash of 1929. The first coat in this era is this 1910 to 15 black cotton velvet coat with black silk lining. The neckline is trimmed with thick black cotton lace with a ball and tassel trim. There, are black, there is a black silk file belt sewn on, and the sleeves are doubled with velvet at the top and pleated file at the bottom. There's also a cream colored double folded insert at the neck for contrast. From 1907 to 08, we have a two-piece dress ensemble consisting of a black velvet bodice with striped collar and braid trim with a he matching heavy wool striped skirt with stitched down pleats. The dress is worn with an off-white cotton lawn blouse with embroidery on the front and collar. This 1920 to 25 green silk and metallic brocade coat has a white fur shawl collar. The coat has no closures and it is lined with pale green satin weave silk. The coat sleeve has an oval insert gathered at the bottom. The coat belonged to the Edward Tower family of Cohasset and it was given by Suzanne and Edward Wadsworth. Next is a 1915 to 20 coat. It is black taffeta with a large shawl collar. The coat is open from the waist and has two large covered buttons with braided arrow design. It has set in sleeves and a four inch flounce at the cuff. And below the waist is a double flounce skirt measuring 16 to 30 inches in length. The back is pleated with two additional buttons. The coat is worn over a 1925 printed chiffon dress with orange chrysanthemums on a black background. There is a black lace insert in the skirt and of course the dropped waist that is typical of this time period. Next is a 1908 to 1912 black Battenberg tape lace coat with black taffeta underlining. The coat collar has a diamond shaped braid insert with tulip shaped trim at the neck, center front and sleeve edges. Jet trim is scattered throughout the coat. And there is a six inch silk fringe at the bottom. Only the upper half of the coat is lined. We jump from the 1920s to the 1950s to 75 in this area. After World War II ended, the next two decades changed the world's nations from previously independent countries to globally inter interdependent economies, brought about by the almost instant transmission of news from one part of the world to another, making it a much smaller place. Television became commercially available to the American public in the early 50s, and as a median, it spread political as well as fashion information. Air travel made it possible for people to move easily from one place to another, resulting in travelers returning with fashion goods from other countries. These innovations, along with an increase in imports, the development and appeal of new synthetic fabrics, and the designs of high fashion taking on a more international flavor, challenged American designers, such as Mambouche, Charles James, Norman Norell, and Claire McArdle who had come of age during World War II to create custom-made clothing for exclusive clientele and designs to be sold uh, to department stores. During this era, coats either followed the silhouettes, having a fitted bodice and full skirt, or were cut full from the shoulders. Most fitted cuts were, coats were cut in the princess line. Sleeve styles included kimonos and raglan types. Some had turned back cuffs ending above the wrist and worn with long gloves. Jackets ending above the waist and called shorties or toppers were a convenient way to accommodate wide skirts. For coats, stoles, and jackets were also popular at this time. So in this area, 1950 to 75, we will begin with a gray coat. From the 1960s, we have a gray wool, notched collar, double-breasted princess line coat with six plastic buttons and slash pockets. This coat is from Bonwit Teller. 
The coat is lined with rayon acetate. Modern materials really took hold now during the 60s and beyond. The next coat is unique for two reasons. Number one, it is reversible, and it is modeled after a Balenciaga coat popular during the 1960s. It is made of plaid wool on one side and solid gray on the other, and it has an interesting structural sleeve. Because it is reversible, there is no label at all. It does have a one and three quarter inch matching covered button on both sides, and only the collar remains a contrast. This coat was worn and donated by Ruth Cumner, and it was purchased on Newberry Street in Boston, according to the donor. The third coat in this modern era that demonstrates the use of new materials developed during the 50s and 60s is this 1965 to 75 tan fur coat with brown full leather front placket, buttons, belts, and inserts in a chevron pattern. It is lined with tan rayon twill. This coat was donated by our society's director, Linda Giacomo. The coat belonged to her aunt, Margaret McCaffrey, and inside on the lining, you will see Miss McCaffrey's initials, MFM, monogrammed in silk. There's also a label from Charles A. Sumner's in Boston. No dramatic changes took place in men's fashions from the 1920s until the end of World War II. Generally, outdoor garments followed the predominant suit jacket silhouette. Chesterfields and raglan sleeve coats were popular during this period. Classic cut camel hair coats became popular, and by the 1940s, styles showed military influence and included long coats, pea jackets, and short Eisenhower jackets. As part of our men's area and continuing, continuing in the 1970s era of clothing constructed with man-made fibers are these polychrome floral pattern ski pants. This typical 1970s print reverses to brown and the pants have button closures that fit to adjust at the waist. They were donated and worn by Wayne Sawchuck of Cohasset and are from the Profile Sports Shop in Mount Lebanon, New Hampshire. We show it with an orange rugby sweater and yellow turtleneck just to bring out the colors in the polychrome pants. Next is a navy blue wool ski suit consisting of a short double-breasted jacket and pants with knitted cuffs and elastic stirrups worn by Yves Maroney, who was married to a descendant of Cohasset's Smith Tower family. This 1940-45 ski suit has a Parisian label, Freddy from Paris, 65 Champs Elysees, Paris, Cannes, and McGeeve, which is a well-known ski resort town in the French Alps. Perhaps Mr. Maroney purchased this outfit while on ski vacation there. The suit was given to the society by his son, Roger Maroney. Also given by Roger Maroney was his father Yves' wool camel hair notched collar car coat. The 1940-45 to 45 coat has three leather buttons, two slash pockets, side vents, and decorative stitching on the shoulders. It is lined with rayon and a supplementary wool underlining for extra warmth. The label inside the coat reads, exclusive Eurocraft import, your friend in storm, rain, and snow, made, made in Germany. The final example of how the men of Cohasset who served in the military during World War II fought off the winter's chill is a navy wool pea jacket. This jacket belonged to J.F. Osboon. It was manufactured by the Naval Clothing Depot, and it appears that Mr. Osboon was a radio operator during the war, indicated by the two red chevron and eagle patch on the right sleeve. We sometimes find unusual objects in the pockets of some of the garments that are donated to the society. In this jacket, we found a rail ticket from Chicago to Boston dated 1966, indicating that Mr. Osboon wore this jacket and kept it for many good years after the end of World War II. From 1900 to 1910, we have this black crushed velvet jacket with lace trim on the sleeves and rosettes on the back. The front and back have Persian lamb and braid trim at the neck, yoke, lapels, and cuffs. The sides have a short slit to accommodate movement, and it has a printed silk lining in black with small white flowers. We're showing this jacket as it would have been worn with a silk cream blouse with embroidery in the front in a wisteria design. 
and with a purple wool skirt embellished with jet beads, soutache trim, and Persian lamb at the hem. Another beautiful piece on loan to us from the Hingham Historical Society is this 1880s purple file silk coat with machine-made black lace at the shoulders extending down the front. The collar is faced with purple cotton velvet and trimmed with black moire silk ribbons. The back of the coat has three ribbon stripes at the center back. And it is lined with printed silk in a striped floral design. For extra warmth, this, there is a thin batting between the silk lining and the outer file. In a change from the straight lines of the 20s and 30s, the 40s emphasized the curves of a woman's figure. Hemlines fell in the decade, early, by but began to rise again by the mid-40s, and wartime restrictions essentially froze styles of the late 30s into the early 40s. Overall, the line was slender until the late, latter part of the decade, and many coats had heavily padded shoulders, raglan or dolman sleeves, were cut with decorative details around the neck and shoulders, or had large fur collars. These long rayon velvet coats, although simple in design, are beautiful examples of the 1930s to 40s silhouettes. This purple rayon velvet coat with a double quilted collar and dolman sleeve is from 1935 to 40. The collar has gold lame on the underside. The coat is lined with purple satin weave rayon and underlined with loosely woven wool. The next coat is a 1935 black rayon velvet raglan sleeve coat with a loop closure, an ermine collar, and tassel at the center front. It is lined with cream twill weave rayon and backed with plain weave wool. There is a label inside indicating it was purchased at John Wanamaker, New York, Philadelphia. The next coat is a 1938 black rayon velvet hooded coat with fur trim at the edge of the hood. It's possibly rabbit. The coat has deep tucks at the shoulder cap and self-covered buttons with a loop closure. It is lined with cream twill weave rayon. Inside is a label that indicates the fabric was treated with Aridex for water repellency. This rayon velvet yellow coat with a shawl collar, flared bottom, and asymmetrical closure is from 1925 to 30. The sleeves are set in and pointed at the bottom. The coat is lined with rayon satin and backed with wool. The coat label indicates it was designed by Carré. This coat is a good example of the transition from the late 20s to the 30s. It has all the earmarks of the 20s, shoulder, shorter length, boxy style, but it has the bias cut of the 30s, which actually began in the late 20s with French designer Madeleine Vionnet. Next in the exhibition is this 1938 maroon rayon velvet coat with black wool backing. The coat has tucks at the shoulder cap, at the rounded collar. It has smock pockets, and is gathered below the waist. It is lined with maroon rayon lining and has self-covered buttons. This 1935 black rayon velvet coat has two self-looped closures, a round pleated collar, pleated shoulder caps, and two self-covered buttons. The coat is lined with twill weave cream colored rayon and underlined with wool. This 1927 to 28 red velvet open coat with a bias cut section at the bottom has a long narrow dolman sleeve ending in an asymmetrical bias cut extension at the bottom with a long slit at the front of the sleeve. The coat front has a large draped double bow and the back and shoulders are trimmed with pin tuck designs. The coat is self-lined. 
Thank you for coming to the tour at the Cohasset Historical Society. We invite you to come back and see the beautiful accessories we have scattered throughout the room. The exhibit is open until March 29th, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for coming.